I am here all alone, please help me. It is cold, the light is fading, and my flask is leaking, please help me. Two, good evening, I love you. Now, I hope that doesn't make you feel uncomfortable, but I have to say it. Good evening, I love you. Three, welcome to... The building standing as it does on land reclaimed from the water in just 1981, after the discovery of, and just before the invasion of, four. This is roughly the distance between somewhere far away over there in the north and somewhere a bit closer over there in the south, on foot, using legs and some of your hands. Five, this is five. Six. This is the Danish word for I can't stop looking at you. Now I hope that doesn't make you feel uncomfortable, but I can't stop looking at you. Seven. This is a walk from far away in northern Europe, somewhere over there, to the shore of Lake Michigan, somewhere over there. So we'd use this list that would contain stories, actions, little kind of movements we'd gathered from people we met on the street. And as the pieces travelled around the world, we did this series of pieces about water and the hydrological cycle for about six years. We just want to make one series of, of works rather than making separate pieces. As it travelled around, it gathered stories around it. The Danish reference, just in the list there, was a story we heard in Aarhus when we were in Forming in Aarhus. And it was about a German man who met a Danish woman, fell in love with her, and learned to speak Danish so he could stay with her. And so this story, we use this story as a little kind of proliferation through our text. There's a sense of maybe the piece turning up like a, like a travelling show, because how we dress, maybe we look a bit like people who, who travel, people who, belong, who are on the road, we have all this stuff with us, we're reflecting all little souvenirs and flags and badges, um, objects from the places we travel to, we become covered and decorated in these little objects. So this piece travelled around and tried to meet with all these different bodies of water. Now a Finnish performance artist said to us once when we were performing in Finland, you could just do that for the rest of your life. The piece is always trying to engender meeting people, trying to build a group, seeing some of the images that image of one of us or both of us in the middle of a large group of people out on the street. We quite like that image that we're building there. But we said, what if we start with a group of people? So we looked for other people to work with. And we formed Lone Twin Theatre. And Molly is part of Lone Twin Theatre. And we're just going to do the first lines of the first Lone Twin Theatre piece. And this is where we swap over. Hey, 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 put your arms around me. How does it feel to be this close to me? How do I smell? Do you like my eyes? What do you see when you look in my eyes? When I look in your eyes, I see your pain. I've seen you jumping up and down. I've seen you dancing. I've heard you singing silly songs. I've seen what your hate does. I have felt your hate. It is important that you believe me. You have to believe me. This is all there is. People and chairs and musical instruments. 
This is our world and you, you choose to harm it. You say there are two sides and people from those sides cannot live together. I say you're wrong. You're wrong in your running at night. You're wrong in your secret life. You're wrong in your singing. You're wrong in your dancing. You're wrong in your jumping up and down, but I believe you can change. I believe you can change your heart. Look at me, what do you see? Do you see somebody about to die? Do you see somebody with a family, with a husband, with a home, with a job, with a car? Somebody with a bit of money, nothing fancy, but a bit of money, somebody with details. Look at these people. Look closely at them. What do you see? Do you see people about to die? Do you see people trying to live honestly? People with a family, people with a husband, people with a home, with a job, with a car. People with a bit of money, nothing fancy, but a bit of money. People with detail. People with their own way of playing the ukulele. Don't laugh at them. This is the end. Why do you struggle? This is what you want. Me and you together. This is the end and I should take you with me but I will not because I believe you can change. Look again. Look again at me. Look again at these people. See them differently. See Look through all the eyes. See what your singing does. See what your dancing does. See what your jumping up and down does. Feel what your hate does. I should take you with me, but I will not. You will not come with me, and you will change your heart. I leave behind the man I changed my name for, and my daughter. Good luck, the man I changed my name for. Good luck, my daughter. And I leave you here on Trinity Square. first words of Alice Bell, the first piece we made together, you can see some of the footage from that piece, taken from the top. Um, we found five people to work with, Molly, Nina, Cynthia, Antoine and Paul, and we've made three pieces together, a trilogy we call the Catastrophe Trilogy. They all tell stories um, in our duo work up to then, we've been very interested in these narratives that we find on the street small moments, small histories, small bio it's a bio biography that we get uncovered by our, our activities. And something like the story of the German man in Aarhus that gets kind of spread across a whole piece. We were quite interested in that story, in just telling that story really, but it happened come within the, within the, the body of the, the list of the other of the piece. So we thought, what if we just told the story and removed all of the other stuff? or the action, or the walking around, and all the steaming, or the sweating. What if we just took the story? These are those three shots from the three pieces we've made, the catastrophe trilogy, Alice Bell at the top, Daniel hit by a train in the middle, and the festival below. And you can see they're all in the same layout. Um, the traverse setting, each with a different colour dance floor. But the ambition of all the pieces is really the same, to tell a story. Um, they all tell a sort of tragic story. You may kind of sense from some of the text in Alice's, Molly's uh, opening speech in Alice Bell, that there's some kind of trouble happening. Alice Bell is actually set in a city that um, is in conflict. And Alice tries her hardest to stay with a man that she's fallen in love with and married. Daniel hit by a train is 52 stories, isn't it? Sorry? 52 stories. Yes. 52 stories of people 
dying in the attempt of trying to save someone else. And we tell each story in turn. That's from a memorial in London, these 52 flats. Um, each piece is told in a very simple style, with very little set, um, but with some kind of theatrical devices. We've got the explosions, we've got lighting changes, we've got confetti bombs here in the festival. The festival is set in a cafe in Australia. Um, it's a, again, it's a very, maybe a sort of personal tragedy in that there's a woman who thinks that she's missing something in her life. Um, both Alice Bell and the festival are fictional stories we've made up. The centrepiece, Daniel Hit by Train, is from this memorial, so they're true stories. Um, she thinks she fi has found a man that she's fallen in love with, and they spend a year apart because they live in different parts of the country. And when they meet again, she realizes that actually it's not really the relationship that she wants. So there's a kind of personal tragedy there. So I'll just move on just in the last few minutes to speak about a couple of pieces. Um, Greg and I alongside making Lone Twin Theatre, we've stopped making duo work where we perform as a duo, but we were quite interested to continue the idea after we're making work as Lone Twin Theatre to work um, with other people, to kind of open up the creative process of other people to perform the work. Um, this is a piece called Speeches. This is, a, this is Roger. He's a cycle career in London. And with him we wrote a 15-minute speech about anything he wanted to talk about. He spoke about being a cycle career. He spoke about his life. He spoke about life's social career and what that meant to him, what he thought other people thought about cycle careers. It was what he thought about in his day cycling around the city, the attitude, the opinions he, he was given about cycle careers. And an audience gathered to hear his speech. Um, we work with a speech writer, Greg and I, and a speech writer. This is Nick. He's a security guard. And he, he spoke about his love of the blues music. We met Nick at his place of work. This is just outside where he works, so an audience arrived on his doorstep. He stepped out of his work in the daytime, stepped up onto the, onto the box, and gave his speech. What is a psycho career? Oh, someone who uh, cycles and delivers parcels and letters. Should we call out? This is Claire in her office. Uh, she works in an office, and she spoke about her love of the Beatles. You can notice she's got a little Beatles picture there by her desk. But um, the audience came into her office um, during the working day, and she stood up behind her desk and gave her speech about the Beatles. This is Pal, who's a librarian, and she spoke in a spot. Let's go back to Pal. She spoke in a spot that. She comes and sits every day to have a lunch. Um, and she spoke about good advice that she's been given over the years. <coughs> that she carries around with the little kind of maxims, little ways of being, bits of good advice that she was hoping to pass on to us. We have a kind of project, a related project also that we do now called Street Down. And similarly, as with speeches, Greg and I and another professional, a choreographer in this case, make dances with members of the public. Just to say the people who take part volunteer for these pieces. We advertise them in the paper and on the notice boards. So all the people from speeches came forward with, with something they had to say. They wanted to make a speech about this thing. In um, street dance, we go into a community and ask the volunteers to take part in a dance piece. Um, we suggest that we're going to make little portraits, dance portraits of people <coughs> who aren't dancers, who aren't trained as dancers. This is Hamid. He's a pizza chef. And 
here's a little table there with we had some there's a, there's a kind of pizza base that's flying through the air. Um, further up the street, we had met him on the street corner, and he did a dance like this. In the middle of the street, we watched for a few minutes, and then we moved on and watched the next participants. And then we met Hamid again at the bottom of the hill, when he had his pizza base, and he picked up the dough, and he did this. And he made his pizza base and he threw it out into the audience. Um, we went to Hamid's home to make the dance. He made us some pizza to eat. In the evening we visited him. We spoke about his life, his job, what he does. And we turned some of that information into choreography, into a dance that he did as part of the piece. These are images from street dance when it happened in Nottingham. This is Angie, who works at the council in the middle of the road. This is Alina, who's an architect, dancing by her house. Angie and Greg did a duet for us. Emily and Chris, we choreographed the fight, which was in relation to their kind of their volatile personal relationship, which they were willing to share the information with us about. So just before I finish, I just want to mention our current project, which I'm sure you recognise some of the kind of hallmark kind of um, approaches in it that have, come in, that have come up in the previous pieces or the last 13 years' work. It's a piece called The Boat Project, and we're asking people to donate objects which have stories attached to them. We don't want um, kind of rubbish. We're asking for wood, so we don't want a bit of old wood that's in your garage. We want an object or an item of wood that has a story, has a memory, has a personal attachment to it, has some worth. And we're asking people to, to donate these wooden objects, these objects to us. And with a boat builder, we're going to make a 30-foot boat out of these objects over the next two years, a boat that goes on the water, that's seafaring rather than a piece of sculpture, but it actually has some use and purpose. And the boat will make these objects and we will archive all of the stories that people give with the objects into a book that travels with the boat and also you know, copies of it elsewhere as well. But, um, so this boat becomes a, becomes a sort of living archive of all these objects, all these donations from people particularly in the southeast of the UK, but also countrywide and worldwide. We're asking for these donations. We're interested in people helping us to build the boat, not just by donations, but by actually coming to the place where it's being built and helping physically in labour. And also, they will crew the boat. Attempt to make a little community of people around this activity of building a boat. 